What we have here on the table is a 1055 kit, which is the proper kit for a 1963 through 82 lower control arm Corvette. And you see here that we've got four plates. Now these plates we're going to modify just slightly to fit into the stock lower control arm where the stock bushing goes. We're going to show you how you do that. And you want to do this before you remove the stock bushing. So let's do it. We have the plate and we've already gone ahead and ground it to fit in between the ears of the lower control arm. And remember, do not remove the stock bushing. You want the bushing to hold those ears in place because what we're going to do is we're going to weld this in position. As you can see, we've gone ahead and welded this in position. And the next thing we're going to do is, is buff a little of the high edges off. You don't smooth out the control arm right around the welding. Just uh, polish it up a little bit so uh, it looks good when we go ahead and paint it. And the stud slips into the end of the shaft, as you can see here. You're going to take a hammer and just gently tap that in. You should leave about a sixteenth of an inch or so, so that you have an area to fill to uh, weld that stud in. We recommend TIG welding in this particular application. You really want to control the heat in there, and uh, the TIG welding will make a real nice bead, so you don't have to grind much off or buff much off, because you want to make sure that the insert for the upper control arm shaft slides onto the shaft freely after you're done welding. Okay, these particular control arms have been powder coated and powder coat gets inside here. This is where the bushing is going to get pressed in and it's going to create more crush on the bushing because of the powder coat. So we go ahead and buff the powder coat out and take it down to raw metal. Don't go past that. It's not like we're taking the material away. We just want to get the powder coat out of there. Okay, now that we got the powder coat out, the next thing we're going to do, this is a trick. When you're pressing bushings in, when these arms are stamped, there's a square edge on the inside here. It's, it's not, it doesn't have a radius. So when the bushing goes in, a lot of times it'll catch on this square edge and damage the bushing. So what we'll do is we go in here with a little die grinder here and we're going to put a slight radius on the inside edge of the lip so it allows the bushing to align into the hole. Doesn't take much. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and press the bushings in. So now, when you, when you put these control arms together, there's a front and a back, of course. Well, the front is always going to be where the sway bar attachment is. And the shafts, if you'll notice, we've got two bolts here and a single bolt here. This is always the front. So when you put this together, it's going to go, this should be on the same side as your front sway bar. Okay, so before we get there, we're going to press this bushing in, and then we're going to install this shaft. Okay, so we're going to get ready to put the bushings in the lower control arm. And now we have a little press fixture here. If you'll, you'll notice, it's, it's an aluminum but it's set up so that there's a small edge because these are very hard to put together. The, the, the 63 through 82 Corvette lower arms, they're just kind of tough the way they're designed to press bushings in and out. So what we do is we have a little machined housing here, a bushing with a relief in it, you know, and so this will actually slide into there. So we're going to use that on the base. And then what we do is we go ahead and put the grease fitting in because we want to line that up in a specific area on the control arm when we press it together. Like I was saying before, this is the front of the car and we want to do the front bushing first. Do not do the back bushing. You have to do the front bushing first to put this together. And you want the grease fitting to go right here where the base of the arm stops. That's where you want to point it. So you're going to line this up in here. And we're going to go ahead and set this in. Okay. 
and be very careful when you press this together because you got to have everything in perfect alignment. Okay, so we got that lined up there. What we want to do is we want to check to make sure everything's looking good here. And it is. So now we're going to gently press this bushing in. And what I'll do is take a look, make sure everything's going in okay. And there you go. Press it all the way down until it contacts the arm. And that's it. So that we got that one in. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the shaft. So it's the same as the upper arms. Steel washer, plastic thrust washer. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna slide this through the back side of the arm and go forward into the other bushing. And then back here, we're gonna put a steel washer and then a plastic thrust washer. And then we're going to install the bushing. I'm going to put my grease fitting in so I can get it aligned properly. Okay. Get everything ready to go here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and press this in, this other bushing, okay? Okay, so we're ready to install the, the other side of this. And now we use a, another press fixture with a slot cut out, the same type as what I use on the upper control arm. Now we're going to use it down here on the lower so it slides through. Index is up in here and so we can now press the bushing in. And there we go. Okay, we're ready to put this together. Okay, so I'm rotating the shaft over here and, and what goes up against the frame on the shaft is where it's got a step to it. This will go flat against the frame and also back here. So make sure that when you're putting this together that this is set so it contacts the frame properly. You don't want an air gap in that particular area for the shaft being upside down. Okay, so now that we got these all pressed in, we're going to do the same thing as we did in the upper. We're going to go ahead and put grease inside here. This is the insert. And we're going to go ahead and tap that in. It's pretty common to have to, to do that because you've got to center up the shaft in the bushing. So until you get it centered, you have to tap it around just a little bit. And the same thing as we put our thrust washers on. Steel, thrust washer, and then of course then the, the nut. And go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so I've got the bushings and I've got, as you can see, this is all together. And I've ran the nuts down. Now these adjust, the preload on these particular bushings adjust just like the uppers. It's, it's just like a wheel bearing. So you run this down until you have thrust contact. So you take all the air gaps out of the bushing. Okay? I run it down tight. I back it off. I come back at it. I just get 
contact as you see here and about an eighth of a turn. That's all I need to do. Same thing here. You run it down, seat the bushing, back it off till you get thrust contact, one eighth of a turn. That's all you need. And now this bushing set and this thing turns nice and smooth, real easy. These are great for drag applications, road race, street. This bushing is like a lifetime warranty bushing the way it's designed. It's good for at least 100,000 miles. Lubricate them as you need. We use a synthetic grease. It's Neo Z12, it's the same stuff we talked about earlier in the video. We recommend that in all of our bushings. And you can also use it in all the ball joints and U-joints. In fact, this high temp grease, we use it in, in the hubs as well for all of our racing applications. And even if we do street, we still use the same grease. It's very good grease. Okay, so the next step on this particular procedure is to go ahead and cotter pin them, just like we did with the upper arms. And these bushings are now installed. Okay, these are done. Now since we put all that grease in there prior to assembly, you do not have to go back in and hit, hit the grease fittings again and pump some more grease into it. It's not necessary. You probably noticed that as I was putting it together, grease was coming out everywhere. So once you get to this point, you're pretty well done. We go ahead and wash the arms up, get all the excess of grease off. We're ready for installation.